Hi everyone, it's Barry from Jerusalem. This week's Torah Parsha is Chukat. Chukat. What's a Chok? A Chok is the most esoteric Parsha in the whole Torah. The Torah has so many chapters called the Parsha. But the Chok is something highly unusual. Now Hashem wants our alliance he wants our connections with him. Not just to understand the mitzvot or the laws that we're supposed to, that we understand, like the laws between men and men, like not to kill, not to steal, not to thieve, not to commit adultery, not to desire something that belongs to someone else. These are the last five commandments. But the first commands between Hashem and men, also in the Ten Commandments, have to do with connecting, bringing Hashem into our lives, bringing God into our lives. So uh, in this week's Parsha, we have the holy cow. Now this expression, holy cow, where does it come from? It maybe comes from the para aduma, which means red cow. So the red cow is the, is the cow of a sacrifice. Now this sacrifice was an enormous sacrifice because when God came down the mountains with when, 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 when he was on the mountain, his presence was on the mountain, and, and Moses went up 40 days and 40 nights, and he learned, and he didn't eat, he didn't drink, he didn't sleep. He was so, like, amazed at the, at the understanding of what he was about to embark upon, receiving the Torah from Hashem. Hashem made the Torah, and it, it reflects his image as well, Though we don't really understand his image because he has no image. He's a, an energy. He's a light. He's a something that we all connect to in terms of our spiritual soul. Our understanding is that Hashem created the world and with that he has these rules. Specifically these rules were for the Jewish people. So there was one commandment that said you're going to have to sacrifice this cow for for the sin of the golden calf again we reiterated last week Moshe came down the mountain he saw them dancing around a golden calf and he knew that they were in trouble because In the desert, they had to follow the plan, and, and they just come from Egypt, so they had to. But they debated where was he, and he delayed himself. He didn't really delay himself. He was on time, but they were impatient, because he actually was their leader, in which their spiritual nourishment came through him, so to speak even though it was supposed to really come through Hashem, because of Egypt, after two, of 210 years that they were in Egypt, their, their, uh, their power, even though they realized their identity as Jews, even in Egypt, and Yosef the Tzaddik, who was, who was uh, looking after, came to Egypt and he brought the Jews to Egypt, Yaakov's son, Yaakov, is later known as Yisrael's son, came to Egypt and he rescued them. And he was an amazing person because your environment affects who you are, how you act, what you do. So if you have a go into a city where they're all like stone, you know, they're all immoral, whatever, I want to put values on things, but the bottom line is you want to be with good people. You want to be in a good environment. You want to be in a good community. So it's very important to, to come into a good community. Yosef Atzadik was the only one who came into this community of complete idol worshipers. He took his own level of knowledge of Torah and he was able to be second to the king to the power. So 
he kept he kept this light from of 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 Torah that was passed on through his father. This was the oral tradition that was not yet given at Mount Sinai, but he kept it alive. In other words, we have the three founding fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then they are reflected in the tefillin shel rosh, in the, in the head of the tefillin. We have <laughs> We have a shin, and, and, then, and then the yad is the hand. So in this week's Pasha, there's a very interesting mid midrash that Moshe had to go conquer the two kings that were in Eretz Canaan, which, which was to become the land of Israel. And these kings saw them, we, we remembered in the spies, it said that when when they looked at the Jews, they said there are ants that look like there are that look like men, and they were laughing. And the Jews, ten of them, were saying, "Whoa, this place is full of giants. How are we going to conquer them?" And that created the situation where both temples would be destroyed on that day that they came and, 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 and saw and doubted that a God who made all these miracles for them couldn't, couldn't help them. They doubted the miracles that they saw in the desert. So faith, we have to understand there are aspects to faith. And we got to understand that if we're deep in our faith, we have to reveal the hidden. So this hiddenness in the Torah is called the Chok, and this is the Parsha. So with, with Moshe Rabbeinu, we understand that he was upset, and he realized that these people would have been killed. So instead of giving them the commandments himself, he decided to break them. And Therefore, they were able to um, ask for their forgiveness because if he gave them the tablets themselves, and uh, uh, it's as if they didn't receive them, so how could how could they be punished? They they had not yet accepted it, but in the end, a price had to be paid. So, what was the price? The price was. We should, we should take this special cow. It's all red. It doesn't have a blemish. If it doesn't have more than two hairs, if it has more than two hairs, it's not a valid sacrifice. And sacrifice it outside the camp. It's such a deep concept. Solomon, the king, Solomon, Shlomo, Melech, couldn't understand it. No one can understand it because it's one of the deeper aspects. But it's just like going into the land and them feeling like grasshoppers among giants, and the giants look at them and say, look at these humans, they look like ants. Right. So the Kleyakar mentioned something very interesting about, uh, about well, not really the Kleyakar, but it's in, a, in Pinchas uh, Friedman's uh, a, a daily Torah portion, portion. He mentions that, that the uh, the Og and Magog were two giants, were brothers, and they were kings in the land. And Israel had to defend themselves against these kings. And one of them wanted to take the mountain, just like Hashem took the mountain. These were giants. The three Parse, they, 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 it was called like uh, uh, as a measurement, three parses, which really is symbolic of the rosh, of the head of the tefillin. If we look on the head, only on the tefillin sharos, only the, uh, the, the, the tefillin of the head, we see two shins. Okay, we had mentioned that the shin looks like this a little bit, and it's round on the bottom, but it represents. The, the, the fathers, the founding fathers, Avraham, Yitzchak, and Jacob, Yaakov. So, but it has it on two sides. 
So what are the two sides? He, he, he reveals this very deep Torah. He says that the, the, the head is the machshava, which are the thoughts. And the arm of the tefillin, which is the yad, or the hand, these are your feelings. And we, we put the hand close to our heads because the head has to dominate our feelings. We have feelings, but if we're hapless in our feelings and we don't really think about what we're doing, then they dominate us. But we, the Jewish people, have the wisdom of the Torah that says, use your head before anything else. And the Torah, is, we have to distinguish what is between holy and what's not holy. That's the concept of the Jewish people. So, between this holiness and unholiness, there's something called Tuma, which is out of the frame of, 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 of holiness, and this Kedusha, which is holy. So when we do all these sacrifices, we have to avoid getting Tuma, this, this thing that knocks out the holiness. But within the holiness itself is a form of Tuma. In other words, each one interacts with each other. But the holiness has to overcome the Tuma. So these two kings will have Tuma, and they needed to be, and they needed to be rectified, so to speak, which calls is a tikkun. And what they did was, from the shin and the yad, the shin is from the sechel, and the yad is for the heart, and this and the shin is for the for the thoughts. We 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 put them together so that they dominate our reasoning abilities. So the Shin has three aspects called the Sphirot of Chacham, Bina, and Das. Chacham is wisdom, Bina is understanding, and Das is taking that wisdom and understanding and put it into action. And we use our hearts to choose one way or the other. That's why when I wrote this book, Dodging with the Devil, we have to be able to distinguish between holy and not holy. Well, these two, two kings even understood what Israel was about, so they realized that they had to combat them. So they said they took his, he, 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 he picked up the oak, he picked up the mountain, and he was going to bite his two teeth into it. So the two teeth represents the two shins and the shell rosh because he wanted to bite them with their seichel, with their intelligence. And the only way they could do it, they felt, was through just take this big mountain on all these people and knock it on. This is a midrash. It's, it's a parable. But it's, it's quite fascinating because we have three and then we have for the head and then we have for on, the, on the arm of the tefillin, we have seven. So we have seven midot, or seven svirot, that are seen throughout the liturgy. I mean, we have the seven weeks between, as I mentioned previously, between uh, Pesach and Shavuos. Every week is a certain measure of a personality trait that we have to perfect. So in this perfection, we have the three above and the seven below. So these are ten spherot that emanate from above and this is our action once we attach ourselves to these spherot and we choose between what is good which is in the shin, in the head and what is bad. Now we also have another shin called sheker. Sheker is a lie, and emes is the truth. So we have to look for the shin, right? We have to look for the shin. We have to look for the truth in our actions and in our beliefs. We can't let things be distorted. So what happened here is Moshe, Moses was a was a was a very tall man. They said he was Eser Amot, which was a he was like bigger than a normal man. And the giants, 
he could only he could only get him by the ankles. So the midrash says he he got him by the ankle. And what was interesting when he had the the, the midrash says when he had the the mountains up, God took ants, and as he was about to throw the mountain on the Jewish people, the ants bore little tiny holes in the mountain and it crumbled on him and the weight of the mountain knocked him down and he died. Brilliant, right? Here they lacked the faith, only 10, two, two had faith, Yeshua and Caleb had faith, but the other t 10 uh, uh, spies going to, to survey the land lacked that faith. But Hashem took the mountain that he was picking up and he put ants in, millions and billions of ants to make holes. So it it crumbled like an earthquake, like a like an avalanche, and it killed the uh, it killed the uh, og. So this is called seeing the hidden. And it's being revealed through the oral tradition. It's a little bit deep what I what I mentioned today, but it tells us one thing: never to give up. We always have to believe that even though it appears hopeless sometimes, that there is a greater thing out there. The, the Creator, a spirit of love and kindness that if you go in the way of love and kindness you'll get in return and those who are loyal to him of the Jewish people the tradition says will merit greater things in the future so I just mentioned this because it's a very difficult topic to talk about. It's not easy. But it's the power of the Hebrew letters themselves. When you take the Shin from Sheker and you take the words themselves have concentration of Kedusha. And it's the Kedusha and the Tuma one can't exist without the other. That's the whole thing. So if we understand that the purpose of the Jewish people is to be a holy nation and to bring Kedush in our lives, and the way we bring Kedush in our lives is to do the Torah and the mitzvahs, even if we don't understand them like the red cow. Holy cow! That's crazy! Ah, <laughs> oh, the Kliyaka says, you know, this red cow business the nations are going to mock you. You know, so you have to know what to say to the nations when they're going to mock you. So it says in the in the first paragraph of this week's parsha in the Kli Yaka, it, it used the, the word Lamar two times. Now, anytime in the text that the word Lamar is used twice, you have to have a question. A red light must go on. Why is he saying it twice in reference to it appears the same thing? But the Kli Yakar was saying, ah, there's the hidden and there's the revealed. And that's what learning Torah is about. Because until the days of Mashiach, things are hidden. But God has a plan for the Jewish people. And that plan is to never lose sight of your objectives. To never lose sight of your identity. To never lose sight that there's something greater in this world that's managing. We're making our choices. We have free choice to go any which way. For a Jew to go to the side of Kedusha or go to the side of Tumor. For the non-Jew, they have the seven mitzvot of B'nai Noach. Not to kill, not to steal. All these things. So it's all, it's all balanced. We Jews have a mission to do a little bit more. To keep the morality. To keep the balance in the world. And if you don't think that the Jewish people have a blessing, they do. We're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. But that's what we're here for, to make a better world. 
and to make a, a correction for the chain of history that's occurred in mankind. But we're all here in it together and we all have to work together to reach a certain level of peace. And that's, that was the purpose of my book. I'm actually going with a new, a new publisher uh, it will probably come out in about two, three, four weeks at the latest. Um, and uh, I'll have it more more advertised if anybody's interested in buying the book. It's called Dodging with the Devil, Only If I Lead. I do speak about the red cow in it. I know a little bit more than I, when I, what I wrote about it. And I try to answer this question. Because if you can answer this question, then you get the, the wisdom of, of Solomon. Because even Solomon couldn't answer it. But there were theories, that, and the theories created, you have to, you have to, you have to uh, give examples. So I, I looked for certain texts to find certain examples. But then I took the contemporary example of Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein had the theory of relativity. So when you look at this concept of the red cow and the red heifer, and you, and you kind of like understood this hidden element of what is kadosh, what is holy, and what is impure, then, and the, the, they both come on the same continuum. To make it even more complicated, is that if somebody becomes impure, the Kohen Godot, the, the, oh, the oh, one of the Kohen, the Kohen takes this red heifer, there were only like, in, since our time, nine of them, and in the times of the Mashiach, the tenth will come. But in these, in this nine times, it was presented, it was presented, and also the Kohen, has to purify the one who made a transgression because that's what we use the sacrifices for. But the sacrifice was, was outside the temple, wasn't even in the temple, was a separate, what we wouldn't even, the sages don't even call it a sacrifice. But it was maybe for the other nations, I don't really know. But the bottom line is we have to try to find purpose in our lives. And if you're a Jew, you find purpose you're not going to find purpose in outside. Holiness is, 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 is a way of the Jewish soul. And because we're still here, that means Hashem is still with us. And because the state of Israel is here after 2,000 years, that means God is still with us. So, you know, you, you have to kind of like put things in perspective. Little tiny Israel is still here. Even though it came back after 2,000 years, 1948, as a state, but King, had King David, had King Solomon, we see the stones 2,000 years ago in the base near the Kotel. It's here. We exist. And we're in the process of the Geula, which is mentioned in the text, which is I'm not getting into. But the Geula is the redemption. There was a redemption in, from Egypt, and then the Jews received the Torah. There's going to be another redemption now, not just for the Jews, for the Gentiles. So who's ever on the side of Hashem, you don't have to be Jewish, but who's ever on the side of Hashem will understand they have a chance. But that's, this chance has to occur when people start seeing the truth of what's happening and leave the Jews alone. Anti-Semitism in the world hasn't left us since the Holocaust where six million of the uh, of 18 million Jews died. A third of the Jewish people died. And today we're, we're, we're not even, we're not even uh, almost, who knows how many Jews there are because we're, we're mixed and the, the standard for a Jew was really through the mother, you know, but the patriarchal lineage is, is also very important. But for keeping the sake of the community, it's through the mother. That's the halacha, it's through the mother. So there's a lot to understand as a Jew. So I'm, I'm, I'm reaching out to my fellow Jewish brothers and my non-Jewish brothers and sisters to get on the page, you know? There are a lot of, lot of non-Jews that are very uh, hopeful and helping Israel. 
And uh, we're very happy to have them as our friends. But we need more people to sift through the lies of certain people and certain nations and kind of like understand that we're here for the, for the goodness of this world, especially in Israel. I was finishing up my copy of my book. I was at the Hebrew University yesterday, which I'm a graduate of in Jerusalem. And it was a graduation and I heard certain names, Jewish names, I heard Arab names. So Israel, and I saw woman, Arab woman getting degrees, learning, you know. In Muslim com countries, it's not that, it's not that way. Israel is so, is so kind to all of its citizens. It's incredible how the world distorts it and makes it such a foolish, foolish lie. The biggest lie in the world, you know. There are, there are situations in Israel where they have to defend themselves. They have no choice. You know, they're, they're elements, political elements. But I don't like to get into all that stuff. But the bottom line is, this is the most humane country in the world to all of its citizens. Take a lot of punishment from those who, without any brains, you know, parents who have children who get paid money to blow up their children for the cause of whatever they want. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. That's why we had the Torah. We had the Torah to tell us that one, idol worship is, is bad, and also uh, uh, child sacrifice is bad. Even for political gain, it's bad. So I leave you with the chok. I leave you with the future. It should be bright. It should be happy. And know that Hashem is with the Jewish people. And if you're a Jew, you have no fear. You just be with Hashem and He will be with you. Have a good Shabbos.